With news already beginning to circulate about the Tensor G4, the next generation version of Google's custom-made processor, I thought it might be fun to finally take a broader look at the Tensor processors in general. What are they meant to be doing? What are the supposed advantages? Why is Google doing this? And should they stop? Now, to this point, I've spoken very little about these processors. The most I've really said is that I'm fine with them. They are objectively worse in most ways, maybe maybe every way, than Snapdragon processors, but they're not so much worse that they get in my way, that they cause me any problems. But again, we're going to dive a little bit deeper here. So let's start off with that first question. What is Tensor meant to be doing? For Google to say, we no longer want to purchase off-the-shelf Snapdragon processors, and we instead want to have Samsung, in this instance, custom-make processors specifically for us, there must be some reasoning there for them to do this. So I'm going to basically tell you the marketing. This is what Google says the reason is for why they're using Tensor. So tailored performance is probably the biggest one. The Tensor chip is specifically designed to excel in Google's AI tasks. And you know, that's what they're leaning into very, very hard. So making a, a chip that's meant specifically for their machine learning algorithms, things like image processing, their custom stuff, according to Google, does make a lot of sense. Now, wrapped up in that would be efficiency, right? So if you're better at running these AI tasks, you would also theoretically be more efficient and that should lead to improved battery life. So again, you're making the software, so making the hardware as well and tailoring these to work well together is the general logic of why they are making their own custom Tensor chips. Are they in fact, in terms of raw performance, slightly slower than the Snapdragon uh, chips that they compete against? They absolutely are, but Google would say they are a better fit for what Pixel devices are attempting to do. Something I tend to tell people all the time when they talk about things like this is that you should think about it in terms of how we look at laptops, right? If you buy a gaming laptop, you expect it to be good at gaming. But if you buy a different laptop that's got a great keyboard and a touchscreen and it's meant for drawing with or it's meant for productivity, you're meant to be typing and doing office work on it, you're not going to knock that office laptop for not being good at gaming. And we should look at the pixels in the same way. If you want a phone that's the best at processing videos and the best at gaming, you're probably going to buy a gaming phone. If you want a device that's good at AI tasks, that's good at image manipulation and all the weird things that pixels do, you would get a pixel. That is basically the marketing, right? They allow them, quote unquote, allow them to create these unique features. Things like Magic Eraser, things like Magic Editor, things like Audio Magic Eraser, things like on and on and on. That's the marketing. And honestly, I think the marketing is probably one of the biggest reasons that they are doing this. We all know that the iPhone runs an A-series chip. A MacBook runs now an M-series chip, right? So I think Google kind of wants to tap into that a little bit as well and say, yeah, Apple's got their A-series, but we have Tensor. It is our own thing. We're not just using generic chips off the shelf like Samsung, like everybody else. We have Tensor, 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 Tensor. They want you to know Tensor and they want you to associate it with pixels because it differentiates them. Now, unfortunately, for some of the techier people potentially watching this video, that association isn't quite a positive one. But I would assume that their hope is over time, Tensor gets better and better and that association becomes positive for everyone. And then it becomes a potentially effective marketing tool. So now you've heard the marketing, but we need to go further because we need to actually tear into this marketing and determine how much of it is legitimate, how much of it is true. So let's start back at the beginning. Tailored performance. The Tensor chip is supposed to be tailor-made with Google's AI tasks in mind. And I believe that is absolutely true. They've leaned into these NPUs, neural processing units, for their processors, and if they are indeed coding and, and creating their AI algorithms 
with that specific processor in mind, it could indeed be an advantage. But we also have to understand something. It's not like Qualcomm with their Snapdragon processors. It's not like Qualcomm hasn't recognized that AI is where we are going. It's not like they haven't, with their most recent processors, invested heavily in AI tasks. And if you just look at raw performance, the newest Snapdragons are almost undoubtedly faster, not just in raw performance, but even in AI tasks when compared to Tensor processors. So the reality here is not that the Tensors are faster for AI, because I don't believe that they are. The leg that Google has to stand on here is that they are custom they are known to them. They are as they designed them. And that can still be an advantage, even if you're not quite as fast, again, in terms of raw numbers. If it fits like a hand in glove, there can still be an advantage there. But we're going to kind of touch on this a little bit more later on in the video. Let's talk about efficiency. I don't think anyone's going to argue that Tensor processors are more efficient. You do potentially have that hand-in-glove advantage, like I just mentioned, but in terms of overall efficiency, did my Pixel 7 Pro have good battery life? Absolutely. The Pixel 8 Pro has good battery life. Absolutely. Is it as good as the S23 and S24 Ultra? Absolutely not. Does my Pixel Fold have pretty good battery life? Sure. Is it as good as the OnePlus Open running a Snapdragon processor? Absolutely not. If they switched to Snapdragon processors, without doubt, these phones would have better battery life. They are inefficient in some very important places, in particular when it comes to their modem. If you're out using cellular data, your battery life is going to suffer more than it ought to running a Tensor chip. What about those unique features, those things that Google says they can only do because they've chosen to make their own processor. Well, unfortunately for Google, I think that there are abundant reasons to be skeptical of this. I've talked about this in multiple videos, but it's a great example. Go back to Pixel 6 with the Tensor G1, and let's look at a feature called Magic Eraser. You can draw around something and it will try to erase it from the image and replace it a little bit. We were told immediately, this is a Tensor thing. This is something we can only do on the Tensor chip. We also very quickly discovered that was absolutely not true. That was marketing. And now that feature runs on any device that has a Google One subscription. And even shortly after it was released, people backported it to Snapdragon running pixels, earlier pixel devices. Again, this was marketing. This was absolutely not true. And if we dig into a whole bunch of other Google Pixel features, which don't get me wrong, I love these features. We know they don't require the Tensor to run. Magic Editor is awesome, but it almost exclusively runs in the cloud. Therefore, it can run on any device. We've just seen it running basically the exact same thing on the S24 devices from Samsung. One of the features they touted with the Pixel 8 Pro was the ability for Google Assistant to summarize web pages. This absolutely does not require the Tensor chip. In fact, you can do it on any device right now with various different AIs. And in fact, Google will let you do that inside their own Chrome browser if you open it through a link in the Google feed or through even Google search. It will pop up at the bottom of the screen on my Pixel Fold. So again, this doesn't require Tensor. We can go on and on like this. Almost all of these crazy new features run in the cloud and the rest of them have by and large been demonstrated to be possible on other devices. Now, if I'm going to double back to the marketing speak, the best case scenario for Google is that over time, more and more of these in the cloud features will run on Tensor and perhaps they will be better on Tensor, maybe they'll be faster, maybe they will be exclusive, although I am highly skeptical of that because it's not like Qualcomm isn't going to be making processors that are better and better at AI tasks at the exact same time as Google, and they are likely to keep up with them, if not be surpassing them as they have been already 
most steps of the way. What was one of the biggest things that Google said at the Pixel 8 event? Seven years of updates for Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro. They say they can do this because of Tensor. Samsung comes out with the S24 line and they say seven years of updates, just the same running an off the shelf Snapdragon processor. Almost all of this is indeed marketing. At the end of the day, the question of whether or not they should continue doing this is much more difficult to answer than it may appear from the rest of this video. You may watch this and thought, well, of course they shouldn't continue. Clearly, there's not much to be gained here, but they are very much aimed at the future. Google is playing the long game with these Tensor processors, and we are already hearing Tensor 4, probably still made by Samsung, definitely still fabricated by Samsung, but Tensor 5 might finally be making that jump to TSMC, leaving Samsung's fabrication behind. That should yield some pretty darn big improvements. And we're also hearing that that Tensor 5 might be the first one that is truly fully customized. That's right. Up until, hopefully, the G5, these chips are custom, but not fully. They are beginning with probably an Exynos chip and then modifying things. So if Google is indeed truly playing the long game with this and Tensor 5 is built from the ground up designed by Google, things may change dramatically with the Pixel 10. Of course, only time will tell. And at that point, we will be able to look back with that 2020 hindsight and say, maybe they should have stopped or it's a good thing that they continued. At any rate, guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. And remember, nuanced conversation only. How do you feel about the Tensor chips? Do you have a negative connotation in your mind regarding these processors? Are you more like me and you think it's mostly overblown and they're generally fine, if not a little bit slower at times, but software optimization of the pixels means I'm not really bothered. I don't really feel any slower on my Pixel devices. In fact, my Pixel Fold feels incredibly smooth, smoother than my OnePlus Open almost all the time. Let me know what your experience has been and how you feel about it in those comments down below, guys. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.